Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to MNS Creativers and welcome to yet another installment of our Easter messages. For this morning, we want to consider the seal on a Sabbath day. The seal on a Sabbath day. Come with me to the book of Matthew. We begin reading at chapter 27 and we'll look at verse 62 and work our way downwards in the NIV. The Bible provides as follows. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to become secure and be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we call upon his name in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, we have gone out to be with family over these holidays. Some of us, we're about to leave for church. I pray, dear Lord, that your presence may tabernacle with us, that you may give us even a peace that surpasses all understanding, so that amidst all the challenges that go on beyond our spaces, we may rest in thee. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, we want to raise our usual five points and these are events that are happening on the Sabbath day. Mark says it was the day after the day of preparation. That would have been the Sabbath day. It would have been the seventh day. It would have been Saturday. As Pilate is in his office over a weekend, the Pharisees and the chief priests approach his office and they approach it and talk to him with the greatest of all respect. And what do they say? They say, sir, we have this issue that we want to set before you. Pilate last saw this gentleman the previous day. It was around three or thereabout when they came over and they said, sir, the Sabbath is about to start. We need to make sure that these three malcontents, these three criminals, do not remain hanging on the cross until the Sabbath hours begin. It is against our custom. You can find this recorded in John chapter 19, verse 31. And Pilate, Pilate authorizes them to go and finish off the crucified, only to arrive at the cross and find that Jesus has already breathed his last. So they broke the bones of the other two uh, thieves. What am I, am I driving at point number one? At point number one, notice this. It is the Sabbath morning when they are presenting themselves to Pilate. They are ready to kill off. They are ready to finish off those who are hanging on the cross approximately two hours before the Sabbath begins. They are conscientious. They could not allow the, to have them wait another two hours or expire at five o'clock. It would have still been fine but they want to make sure they are not hanging on the cross until the Sabbath begins and they go off on this mission at around three in the noon time, 1500 hours. But on Sabbath morning, they are not in the temple. On Sabbath morning, they are not in the synagogue. They are back in Pilate's office in the midst of the Sabbath, center of the Sabbath, eye of the Sabbath, what is their business to make sure that Jesus does not resurrect from the grave? What good is the law if it is a weapon for us to kill people before their time? What good is the law if it is going to be used to make sure that those who can come to life must remain dead? That is a travesty of justice. Now they go out and they say, for the sake of the Sabbath, we are going to kill them. But... Now that you want him to remain dead, who we'll forget about the Sabbath and deal with securing graves on the Sabbath? How unfortunate. Point number two. 
as they speak to Pilate, having addressed him as, Sir, notice the next thing that comes out of their mouth. You are going to be shocked at verse number 63. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, that deceiver said after three days he will rise again. I, I, I want to zero in on the terminology that they used to describe Jesus Christ. Jesus is identified as the deceiver by the Pharisees and the chief priests. And yet the rest of the Bible, I mean, records 35 times that the term deceiver is reserved for Satan. It is reserved for Lucifer. It is reserved for the devil. He is the receiver of, I mean, the deceiver of Genesis and the deceiver of Revelation and the deceiver in between. He deceived our first parents. And when you get to Revelation chapter 12, the verses 9, he deceives the whole world. And yet, Satan has the guts to take his name, copy and paste it on Jesus Christ. Relabel him from Messiah to deceiver. How unfortunate, how unfortunate and how even, not only unfortunate, even trying too much. This is an overreach. It will not stick. Christ cannot be the deceiver. And let's get to point number three. These gentlemen who have gone out to make sure that they secure Christ in the tomb, Pilate says, gentlemen, yesterday you forced my hand to take an innocent life. Even when my wife had told me to stay away from a righteous man, I took his life. Three times I told you I find no fault in him and you will not let me make my decision as an office holder. You went on to even threaten me that I will not be a friend of Herod anymore. Now, go. You go and secure that particular grave the best way you know how. These are teachers of the law. They are not experts on grave digging. They are not experts on securing graves. And Pilate says, I will not be party to this. You go. The best I can do is offer you a guard. He's already here on duty. Take him with you. And so they take off and they go to secure the grave. It is very embarrassing. Most embarrassing when the respectable people who must bring people to life, they make it their business to monitor graveyards, to make sure that those who are dead remain dead. When we do not partner with Christ, when we don't appreciate our calling and our station in life, we will make it our business to restrain people in the graves and keep them dead and buried. Point number four. How did they do this? They went on to put a seal on the stone and they posted the security guard. I want to ground on placing a seal. What did it mean to place a seal? It was to make sure that the, the, the grave is not tempered with, to make sure that the seal is not broken, to make sure that no one accesses the grave, to make sure that whatever is in the grave remains in the grave. And whoever is outside the grave does not go into the grave. This is what they had in mind. And so they posted a guard, a soldier outside the grave. If their intention was to keep Jesus in the grave, they could have posted the soldier in the grave. But they thought their business was to make sure that the disciples will not access the grave. And that is why they posted the soldier outside the grave. And they put the seal outside the grave. Talking about placing seals. Those who wanted to do work on the Sabbath, they placed a seal on the stone. But he who is Lord of the Sabbath placed his seal on the day. Go back to the book of Genesis. He has created the earth literally in six days. And on the seventh day, he blesses the day and he places the seal of his presence on it. He hallows it. He blesses it. And he sanctifies it. He sanctifies it, which, which means he sets it apart. He fills it with his presence. And he even takes time to rest from all his work. Not that he was tired, but because he wanted to spend time with humanity. So he places his seal on the day. Those who are imitators, those who have no respect for the day, they are placing seals on stones but God places his seal on the day. It is his day. Fast forward to the time when the children of Israel have become economic refugees 
all the way in Egypt. 400 years they have been emigrants out there. Now they are on their way back. They have been exposed to Munra. They have been exposed to the river Nile. They have been exposed to all forms of gods. They have forgotten the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Israel, and the God of Isaac. As they come back, God says in Exodus, because I chose you, not because you are special people, but because I am a covenant-keeping God who made a covenant with your fathers, God now carries them on his wings like an eagle. When they have landed in the wilderness, they are beginning to move from the wilderness of Sin through the wilderness of Paran and Rephidim. As they go through all those places, God provides for them a way of sustenance. He says, you are my children. You are heirs of the kingdom. What I serve for angels in heaven, I will give you as well. He gives them manna. As they receive the manna, the question they ask is, what is this? And God gives further instruction. You find this around Exodus 16. And he says, every day you pick it in the morning. Should you want to boil it, go ahead. Should you want to roast it, go ahead. Should you want to fry it, go ahead. Should you want to eat it as is, go ahead. It is yours. Pick it every morning. But on Friday is the day of preparation when you will prepare for the Sabbath. And he goes on to remind them on that Friday. Tomorrow is the Sabbath day. Pick a double portion. And some went out on Sabbath morning and they never found it. The Lord's blessings are to be prepared for. And they are received by those who prepare to receive them. And some picked a double portion during the week. And it got rotten and it smelled. And as a result, he says, you are a people who will not listen to my commandments. How long shall you continue to disobey my commandments? And God placed his seal again. Move over to the book of Isaiah chapter 66, the verses 23. God now talks to the Israel who is going to be saved into the kingdom. And he says, when they have come into my kingdom, they shall continue to keep the Sabbath and they shall keep it from one moon to the next moon, they will appear before me in my heavenly temple. From one Sabbath to the next Sabbath, they will appear before me in my heavenly temple. At D, the children of Israel find themselves back again in bondage. This time they are not in Egypt, they are in Babylon. And the prophet Ezekiel at chapter 20, the verses 12, now writes, And God says unto them, I have given you my Sabbaths as a sign for an eternity with you, my children. It is my seal. It is my seal. At point number five, Christ is now in the grave. He has already told them, I am the Lord even of the Sabbath. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, think not that I have come to destroy the law, but I have come to fulfill it. And he will not even destroy or even break it while in the grave. Having been laid to rest on a Friday, on Sabbath, he remains in the grave and he recognizes the seal of God cannot be broken. It is on the day. Let the priests place their seal on the stones. But I will recognize the will of my father for that which my father wills, I do. And Revelation 12, verse 17. He places his seal once again. The dragon shall be wrath with the seed of the woman, and he shall proceed to make war with those who keep the commandments of God, and they uphold the testimony of Jesus. This is the seal of God. It is placed on the day when the chief priests are placing the seal on the stone. And while they are at work, having posted a man outside, in conclusion, we can place our plans and schemes that seek to frustrate the plan of heaven. And guess what? God is not prompted into action. He does not respond because you have decided to place a seal outside. He does not respond because you have decided to place a soldier outside. He continues to rest through it all. And may I talk to the children of God this morning and say, while you are in the presence of the Lord, rest with him. Do not go out and take matters into your hand. Take time to rest. Rest with him. 
when the rest is over, God will come into action on the morrow. Please do call again and let us listen and watch what God does on Sunday morning. The tomb shall be empty once again. The tomb shall be uninhabited. Death shall not keep him in the grave. Let us not preempt, but do call again in MS Creative Us. Until then, blessings and peace.